Hello and welcome to the Tarka Zone. How you doing and thanks for joining me. Well, we're going to be talking about New World again today. And I've been following a lot of the uh, dev posts. I've been following other YouTube channels to, to kind of get some of the information that is out there about New World at this time. And what I want to say is there's some conflicting information going on for those people who have beta or alpha tested it. They come on and they've been ranting on their YouTube channel. The video is up for a little while and then YouTube takes it down, obviously, for, for the reasons that we all know is people should not be discussing it yet because it hasn't been released uh, for, for that kind of activity. So I have seen some of those videos and I have seen some of the concerns people have with this game. And I'm going to talk about those concerns, but first I want to talk about things that are guaranteed knowledge that is no, there's no, uh, uh, well, it's, it's firm, it's, it's, it's concrete. This is information that they've provided, there's no guesswork, there's no guy ranting about it, because it seems like it's really simple and it seems like it's uh, fairly... Uh, accepted uh, what we're about to see. And we're going to be looking at items in New World. And I know this article came out in June, but I've been trying to hold off on my New, new World videos because I wanted to get closer to launch so that those people who kind of just want to take a break from all the naysayers and, and you know, all those people that were butthurt for the delay, I'm um, hoping that they've calmed down now and they can look at content now that they've provided that the devs provided us and hopefully get back on board to wanting to play this game and again i'm going to go over some of the naysayers what they're saying uh currently about the game and about people getting mass refunds uh we're going to talk about that in a little bit well let's talk about items in new world and again i'll i'll provide these links this link for this uh page in my comments below like I've normally done with most of my videos that I've created so let's just look at this and and really it's really s explained uh what it's about I did a video uh, one of my new world videos I kind of looked at these items in my in a previous video and, and talked about them but I had a lot of uh well what if what if this what if that this kind of explains it I mean you don't get every question answered with this um with this post that they've made but you get a pretty good uh understanding on how it's going to work and now there's obviously food and drink in the game and what they're talking here is it looks like eating and drinking provides a slow health regeneration so if you consume something then your your overall regeneration of your hit points i'm going to call them hit points or health uh will slowly go up so if you get damaged by a creature, you might be able to step away for 10 seconds and get your full health back uh, just waiting those 10 seconds as long as you've consumed the, the right food. And I imagine, and we'll see here, that different foods do different things for you. So maybe you want a uh, carry bonus. And that's the thing that you find out about this article is your, you've got a carry limit. So when you pack on all the items that you want on from armor to weapons and consumables, you have a carry limit. If you exceed the carry limit, you're going to start to slow down. And I think you'll see this function uh, Fallout uh, 76, I think, is, is, is the game. Uh, that was in that game. So if you packed on a bunch of stuff, they'll get to a point where you wouldn't even be able to move. You would just like... You couldn't do nothing. So you'd either have to drop something. The problem with that game was is it never gave you enough storage limit to carry what you want to, to have items. So in that game, that was a breaking mechanism for me because just the basic items that I wanted to carry in that game slowed me so down that I couldn't move. And it just made no sense. So I'm hoping that that's not the case here, that they've given you a buffer so that you can carry um, enough stuff to actually get your basic needs met. And then you have a storage unit. Imagine if you buy property in this game, you'll have a storage area where you can put other items for storage later in case you want to use them. And I think that would be a successful, um, uh, MMO if they allow you to carry, you know, what you need. 
and not try to limit you or kind of try to do a survival thing that, oh, we're giving you 50 pounds and you've got a min-max at 50 pounds and you're thinking to yourself, well, geez, what is that? A, I could put a boot on and a helmet? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So it's, I'm hoping that this game makes sense when it comes to your carry capacity. But going back to the consumables, you can take consumables like food that increase that. So you, if it, you know, it could be a salmon, like a, they cook a salmon and you eat the salmon and you can carry 20 more pounds for the duration of the buff. Meaning that the food you consume is gonna give you an added a, a buff or a increase your abilities for a certain amount of time. And then just make sure that you have another salmon to eat when that times out. Because you could find yourself walking around with a 20 pound limit and then that buff goes away and then you can't move again. Because you're right there on the edge of your weight limit. So you have to consume another one so that you can start moving around again. So that's that's my thinking on that. So the uh, well, raw food in fresh water can be used in a pinch. Uh, so you want to cook it. So they have ways for you to do that. Here it says you can uh, process the food at a kitchen in a settlement, um, or you can cook the food at your camp. Remember my other videos. You can place down a uh, camp anywhere you want. And that camp allows you to do very basic, refined uh, survival kind of stuff. And cooking is one of them. Also note that when you do drop that camp, you respond at that camp if you like. So if you end up dying to a monster, you can choose to uh, respawn at that camp that you last placed. All right. So there's a wide variety of food. There's a wide variety of drinks uh, that can be consumed. Uh, not all of them are um, combat related. Again, it's going to be based on what your play style is and what you need at the time. Some, uh, some of these foods add points to constitution, uh, which uh, governs your base health. Uh, it looks like some of them do combat. And uh, it's, really, it, it's really straightforward. You, I imagine the game's going to have all sorts of recipes from level one to level what's this uh, it says level 50 so what you want to do is if you're grinding cooking or if you're decided you wanted to craft this kind of stuff like cooking so you'll be able to make all sorts you know you have a list like a, a a cookbook a recipe book that you can pick and choose what you want to create because you might have a level five guy that just joined your your faction or joined your clan and he might benefit from the the roasted squash but only it's at his level so a 50th level player would want the fish uh, and, and glazed potatoes because it's a higher level and you can look at the different abilities that you get so it's not that you're going to just be cooking 50 level items you're going to have to figure out what people are going to need and that's going to be some pre-planning and what and working with your clan and the members of your clan to find out what they are going to want because not everybody's going to do cooking i mean there are some games where everybody did the cooking you know you just sat down and cook it was easy this game looks like it's a crafting profession so it's not like Everybody is going to take the time to go out and get their cooking levels up. It just doesn't seem that that would be, uh, unless you have all the time in the world. I mean, if you're just there playing a new world 24-7, I imagine you can knock off cooking and, and other things. Potions uh, are going to be basically what you've seen in other games. Here it says you might drink a potion to increase your carry weight. Of your inventory or enhance your defense against a particular elemental damage type such as lightning so there's going to be potion making uh and uh it looks like it's kind of par for the course as you see for the cooking where you got different levels of things that you can do so you see here level one to level 50 uh the you can see the ability differences but again it's going to be a long a, a larger uh recipe book so you can be able to choose from you know and i imagine some of these recipes they don't really say it here but i imagine the recipes are either auto learned when you get to that benchmark or they are found in the game my hope is they're found in the game meaning that if you cook and you've got eight recipes 
and you're cooking, 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 and then and then you get to a point where what you're making is not giving you any experience because most games are like that. So you, you, you've capped your experience because you need something better to cook or something more challenging to cook. And you might have to go to a vendor. You might have to go to the auction house. You might have to go kill a mob or you might have to go do a quest. And when you do that, it opens up a new recipe for you to be able to make. And if you do it that way in a game, it's more challenging. Plus, it's it's it doesn't guarantee everybody everybody knows the same thing. So if you do it that way, where you're unlocking recipes for doing things in the game, this way you've earned the recipe, and you might have a recipe that no one else in the game has because you took the time to unlock it. So that's just my thinking there. Weapon coding. This is like poisons you see in a game, like World of Warcraft, the rogues could poison their daggers and whatnot. This is what we're talking about. Uh, and it's not just damage. Weapon coatings applied to a weapon and granted a uh, damage bonus against a particular family of creatures. For instance, applying a corruption coating to your weapon will enhance your damage against corrupted enemies. But I imagine there might be other coatings that give you lifesteal or a coating that uh, slow... It's like a wounding coating that slows down the guy's, the person's attack that's attacking you. I mean, you see, you can do all sorts of things with this. You know, a, a paralyzing a coating that, uh, you know, makes them, uh, you know, pause every once in a while. So their defense drops. I mean, it can get really robust. And again, these are level driven from, you know, from stuff you do early on to stuff that uh, you're going to want to do when you get to, uh, you know, the level, higher levels. Okay, equipment. Weapons and armor. While exploring and fighting creatures, you find and acquire equipment items that can be immediately used, provided that you are a certain level to be able to equip them. So again, this is going to be level-based. So if you go out on day one at level two, and for some reason, some epic thing drops, it's level 50, you won't be able to use that until you get to 50. So just keep that in mind that this is not, you find it, you wear it kind of thing. So you can't have a buddy go out and grind a high level armor set and hand it to you. Well, he can hand it to you and you can put it in your storage, but you won't be able to use it until you are the appropriate level to use it. So you want to keep that in mind. So you these... Uh, these items have perks. Uh, well, when it comes to the uh, weapons and armors, they can have up to three perks. Plus, they can be gem slotted. So just think Diablo. I think if you have ever played a Diablo series and you found a random item that drops off a creature, that item had different uh, magical abilities. Plus, some of the items would drop and they would have a gem slot in them so you could put a gem in or a slot of gem that and that gem gives you other abilities uh they're saying that in this game a weapon can drop with all three perks and also drop with the gem in the gem slot and i believe with armor and weapons in this game you can take the gem out if you want and put a different one in there are other items in the game you can't do that if it has a gem in it it's permanently in there and that's what you've got to deal with so the, the items can drop with three perks. The perks on an item can drop with uh, can drop with or pull from a pool of potential perks. So it's an RNG thing. So when the sword drops, the game goes out and says, oh, find me three perks that I can throw on this thing, if it meets that criteria, where it could say, the, the you know, the coding could say, uh, first, drop the item, then choose if it has one to three perks. Let's say, oh, uh, this item only has one perk, so it has one perk, and then it goes to uh, a list of perks and just throws one in. So uh, generally items with higher gear scores have the potential to drop with more perks and or more powerful versions of those perks. So for example, if you get on level one, you get a sword with monster slaying, and that monster slaying could be like plus five to killing monsters. Well, at level 50, if a 50 level sword drops with that same perk, it could be not plus five, it could be like plus 100. So the perks themselves uh, increase depending on the level of the weapon and how you come to get the weapon. So that's, that's interesting. So it's a lot like Diablo. Um, uh, so the items with the, mo the most perks are rarer than those without. 
in real and the real reality defi definition is based on the number of perks on the item has so this is an example of this is like a, uh, a level one weapon and then it shows here this um, this has a perk and then this one and then this one and so basically you see as the levels go up they they have more and and more perks depending on I think this is where the perk uh, this this says bonuses so I'm imagining what that that's what that is is the perks and this one has three and this one has three but these are all blue see there the perks the verbiage is blue so I imagine based on that color is telling you what level that perk is where this perk on this weapon is in white so it's not a high end perk but it's definitely an added perk under the weapon. The, fir the thir a third feature to look for in the item is the gem slot. Occasionally, items can drop with an empty gem slot. Anyone can socket a gem into the item, but the gem store must be first first be cut by a skilled jewel crafter. So, if you're wanting, if you get an item and it's got an empty slot, then you need a friend or yourself to go do jewel crafting to put that in there. Now, my thoughts is. Um, well, it does say socketed gemstones cannot be removed. So I was mistaking there. I thought some of them could be removed on the items and weapons, but obviously not because it says right there, socketed gemstones cannot be removed. But in the uh, majority of cases, they can be replaced. Oh, okay. So I was right a little bit. Gem gemstones enhanced one or more of the character's core abilities. So maybe meaning they can be re they get destroyed. Basically, you can put another one in, but the first one can be destroyed. So that's how that is going to work. Where it's saying that you can't remove it, but you probably have an ability to, okay, I'm putting the other one in and the first one gets destroyed. So it's not like you can keep the old one. So once you socket a gem, that gem's locked in and you can replace it, but it will be destroyed if you do. I mean, that's where I'm getting we're reading this and i had read this uh earlier just to pick out the uh the easter eggs of what i wanted to talk about so that's why i knew i had read that definitely you can replace the gem okay weapon perks can improve a weapon stats it can even additional elemental damage to them while armor perks can increase defense against different kinds of uh, damage and add extra pockets to allow you to carry more weight in your inventory so that might be a good thing where you've got armor uh, that ha its perk its perk is add 20 pounds to your carrying weight. But if you've got gloves, you got your chest, you got your pants, you got your boots, and if they all have that perk, then you're walking around carrying everything, right? I mean, if they balance this right, um, that could be cool. And so you're sacrificing combat perks for carrying perks. And if you're doing, uh, if you're just doing the game for crafting, that might make sense. So you need to go out and get your items for crafting, and so having a gear set that is all weight perks might be a good thing. All right, each piece of armor that you wear can uh, con uh, contributes to your overall equipment load, which in turn affects your mobility when evading. So there are three types of equipment: equipment there's there's light, normal, and heavy. And if you have the full set of light, you're moving around at uh, a little faster. Uh, you know, it's, it's, they call it wearing light armor will keep you at fast movement, meaning that you can tumble, you can move around, and you're just getting around quicker. So if somebody's trying to hit you or even with a projectile weapon, your movement is so fast that you might be able to evade all their attacks. You know, think about a rogue in most games. You know, they're just evading attacks by using light armor. Medium armor is going to put you at normal uh, movement speed, which is okay. And then the heavy armor sets, if you have the full set, you're going to be really bad. You're going to be moving slow. And you get the added defense for the heavy armor. It's just that you're not going to be dodging as much attacks. You're going to be absorbing them. That's how that works is if you're running around with plate mail, the plate mail is there to kind of absorb your attacks so that you can get your job done. It's not there for you to dodge around. And so it's different play styles here. Now you can, you can add the armor so you can wear a few items of light. You can wear a few items of heavy. And that might put you still at the normal speed. So you can 
choose which armors you want. You don't have to have a full set of heavy. You don't have to have, a, you can mix and match them. You know, you can do whatever you want. So if your style is to dodge a lot, but you want the chest plate to be plate so that you can, t you can absorb a hit if you get hit, you can do that. It's just that you got to figure out when the game gives you, you know, puts the items in your, you know, when you get the items and you want to, you want to figure out which category you want to be in. Do you want to be in a fast movement? You want to be in a medium or normal movement? Or do you want to be in the slow movements? That's really where it comes down. Now, I have also imagine that if you have abilities that allow your weight increase, like perks that we were talking about for weight increase, that might drop you to fast movement. So for example, I could probably be wearing full plate mail. But if all my perks on the plate mail is carry increase, that might actually allow me to move at fast movement because of my carry increase is so high that I could wear full plate mail and still dance around like a rogue. That might be how this works. You know, I, I don't know. I'm just speculating there. All right. So moving on, you, you know, we, you're going to get to a point where you'll be able to find le legendary weapons and your crafters can craft uh, the legendary weapons. And the problem, this is where I'm coming in, it, it making me nervous, is I've watched some of those alpha uh, YouTubers saying that y there is a unique encounter in the game, that they made it so that if you destroy, or you go through the encounter or do the quest, and you kill this end boss, he drops legendary weapons. He drops legendary armor also. So what their concern was is there is a, a, there's a key, I guess, that you use to, to unlock or ha have your party go into this scenario. Well, I guess the key's easy to get. And once you get the key, you can just run that scenario over and over and over again. So a good group of guys just together can bypass the entire crafting aspect of the game by just grinding this mission or this, this mob at the end. So that was what the biggest concern was, is if you make it easy to get the key, and that means you can run the boss eight or nine times a day, and eight or nine times a day he drops legendary weapons, within a couple days your entire crew will all have legendary armor and legendary weapons, and there'd be no point to ever have a crafter in your clan. Because you won't need one. Because the other problem is, I guess they did no durability loss either. And no repair loss in this game. And that's my understanding basically on these rants that I've seen on YouTube. So basically, if I my 50 guys got together and said, hey, let's not do crafting at all. Let's just go milk this, this boss and then get all the legendary equipment. That's it. That's all we need to do. Because once I get it, I have it forever because there's no durability loss on the items. And it just seems weird that they would make it that way. Uh, and I imagine they did it that way. If you made it almost impossible to kill this boss, it makes sense. But this guy was saying that in Alpha, his crew was just doing that. He's like, yeah, we're just killing this one boss. We don't have to have anybody make us anything. The initial equipment was found. So basically they went around and killed a bunch of monsters and got their initial equipment from drops. And then they went off to go farm this key that you need and then go kill this boss, and they just got epic equipment. And that's what the concern was. Is like, that doesn't seem like a smart way to do it. So I watched the video. I went to a couple other uh, locations where this is, and I apologize. That's my phone. I'm going to... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I should have probably shut that off when uh, before doing my video. But that is, that's what happens. Uh, and normally I do. So I apologize for that. So moving forward. So I went to other um, uh, links where people were complaining about this feature. And in those links, the developers responded saying, no, this is how we built the game. And this is the way it is. And thank you for your input. So that was their response. This is how we built the game. And thank you. Well, it made no sense. And it really makes no sense now to me that that's they're going to keep it that way. You know what I mean? They're going to make it so that people can do this avenue of the game and bypass all the crafters. That seems silly to me, and that could be wrong. I mean, I could be 
misunderstanding what I read and what I saw, but that is what I understand, and that was one of the biggest gripes. So a, as you can see, is legendary um, weapons here uh, have all sorts of niceness to them. Empty gem slot, the whole bit. All right, trinkets and bags. Now, trinkets provide passive bonuses to uh, characters' core abilities. Trinkets can be grant additional ability uh, points to one or more your attributes. Now, the bags, if you find bags, those also increase your weight limit. Uh, it says right there, bags increase the amount of your, uh, your weight you can carry in your inventory and have their own set of perks as well. So even the bags and the rings and the necklaces or whatever you want to call them, they all have their own perks. Again, think Diablo here, guys. This is seems to be just Diablo, but instead of being a top-down game, uh, this is a MMO style game where, you know, with you have almost first person shooter mechanics where you've got to swing your own sword. So that's what it looks like they're going for here. And crafting resources are all over the world for you to find these items. All right. So I'm going to scroll back to the top. And again, I do apologize for phone ringing. I, it, it, <laughs> I should have put it on mute before we started. There is one other big concern that. I've picked up on uh, when I've been out getting information. And this came from a gentleman, I think his, his video still might be up, but it came from a gentleman who did not like the PVE um, battle scenario. And this is what the scenario is. You've got 50 people in your, in your guild, your clan, whatever you want to call it, your company. And they're going to limit it to 50. That's it. You're going to be able to have 50 people on your roster. They're not going to increase that. And again, I go back to how the dev responded to this guy and said, nope, the cap is 50. And we did it that way because we want uh, people to interact. Meaning that, you know, you want to make friends with another company that's got 50 people and they might have friends. And so everybody is all friendly. And so to get things done, you're going to need to get those friendly companies to help you. And in the situation where the NPCs are attacking your base, this is the situation. You've got your base, you've got your town, you've got your fort, and your 50 guys have done everything they can to, to, to support it. So your entire company has spent their time building this town. And the, and the game mechanic says that the NPCs or these creatures, these monsters, are going to attack you. That's the mechanic. So what happens is the game says, oh, these guys are going to attack you on Sunday um, around 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm just using this as an example. So everybody, 50 guys, the 50 guys go to the bulletin board or they go to the NPC and they sign up. Well, the problem with the game mechanic right now is only 10 guys of your crew can actually sign up for this thing. The game mechanic is relying on people outside your company to force that friendship bond to come in and help you. So you spent all this time busting your butt making this castle and only 10 of your guys can defend it. So that forces you to go out and make friends and say, hey guys, can you come sign up for this battle so that we have enough guys to defend it? Because you're not going to defend it with 10 people. So let's say 40 people outside your company sign up for this thing. And then none of them show up. That's the problem. It's like, why on earth would you make a game mechanic that you rely on others to defend your assets and 40 of your fellow guildies, company members, can't help you? That makes no sense. And again, I, it made no sense to me. So I was like, this can't be right. So I went to another devlog and sure enough, they're like, this is how we made the game. We made the game this way so that you have to rely on others to defend it. So talk about a troll haven troll fest if you're a troll out there on the internet and and you get off just messing with people then this is your this is your dream game because these people could have a npc battle going you know coming and you can sign up and and know you're not showing up you even can sign up and do things to actually allow these monsters to get into your fort easier so these 
trolls can just show up, sign up, and once they signed up, they're locked in. So you could have a company, you could have a 50-man company guild that are trolls. And they go around the world signing up for these NPC battles with no intent to ever help you. Just to watch your crap burn. That's the problem. And it was brought up and the devs replied, well, it is what it is. So that leaves me to believe <laughs> that when this game launches, there's going to be some problems. And there's going to be some me uh, really mad people, I think. Especially if you're going to put what? I mean, why put that much work into building these, these fortifications if you know at any moment the game can have monsters attack you and there's really only 10 people you can count on? And you can't get it done with just those 10 people. That that seems to be crazy. So you take it for what it is. I and I'm hoping that they change it. I'm hoping that they put a timer on it. Whereas, yes, we're going to allow some people to sign up uh, and then see if you can prioritize. You know, an hour or two hours beforehand, you can prioritize because you might find this. Like, say you got this guy named the Joker, and he's always signing up for your stuff, but he never shows up. There's got to be a way in the game to ban that guy from signing up because he never shows up and he's just signing up to give you one less person to defend. And I can imagine, uh, I mean, it just, it just seems like they're opening the gate, the floodgates for people who want to troll. That's why I stopped playing Rend. I mean, Rend was an awesome game. Its concept was amazing. But the problem being is everybody trolled. There was not one game I ever was able to join where there wasn't somebody trolling us. And you got one person that trolls you and the game mechanics are lost for everyone. And you're just vulnerable to invasion because you got this one guy opening up the gates. When the, when the invasion comes, you just oh, open the gate and let him in. And every single time, there was always one person on our team in Rend that would open up the gates. Or they would create so much mayhem um, by going into certain locked boxes that they had access to and just throwing the stuff out to the world. And so all this stuff that the, the, you were pack ratting um, for invasions, when you go to the box, it would be empty because the troll showed up, grabbed all that stuff and dropped it off the side of the, ma uh, side of the world. That was the problem with Rend. And let's hope that's not the problem here with New World. Because if it is, this game is done. This game is dead on arrival. I can't see them without fixing that. This game doing anything successful. And this brings me to the, the refunds. It is true that this game is becoming the most topped refunded game for pre-buys there is. Because I don't think the game has an identity yet. And people put, you know, even uh, I pre-bought it. But they haven't taken my money yet. They don't take my money until the game releases. But people, because of they want them to know they're not happy, have you know removed their pre-buy. And I guess Amazon has admitted that they've got lots of uh, people saying, no, I no longer want to pre-buy this thing. I'll wait for it to hit the shelf and watch what you guys do for the first month. And then maybe after the first month, see if it's a game I want to buy. And, I, and I'm kind of on the fence with that. Because if this is what these devs are saying, it is what it is, and these alpha players are saying to them, uh, you've got some huge gaps here. Uh, I don't think you understand that there are people in this world that just want to watch it burn. Uh, then, you know, and there's nothing in the game mechanics to kind of, you know, work around that. And the, and the reality is, is if it was full PvP, you'd be able to work around it. You just find the guy, every, you, you hunt the guy down, you kill him. Every time he's online, you kill him until he no longer wants to play. I mean, that would how I would resolve it. If the joke, if this guy, the Joker, is signing up and causing problems, if it was full PvP, there's ways to make sure the guy doesn't come online anymore. But this game is not. There is no reason to go PvP, and that was the other big rant that these videos had was there is nothing in the game that really forces you to PvP, and the gains you get for flagging are not high enough for the risk. So basically, you could flag for PvP with a 10% experience bonus. Whoop to do is what these guys are saying. There's no point because you get ganked once and then you got all this time having to run back and that window of time you lost, 
you would have been able to make more experience if you didn't have the 10%. So it's a time management thing. Why would you flag when you know you can be ganked and you can spend 40 minutes trying to get back to where you're going and during that 40 minutes, you could have just been collecting more experience because you weren't flagged. So that was that was another <laughs> big concern there. Like you're not really giving anybody reason to flag. So that means that if somebody is trolling you, you've got real no avenue to stop them. Because you could just stand in your town, kind of waving like this and saying, I'm waiting for your next battle and I'm signing up with no intentions of showing up. All right, well, that's been my uh, video update for New World. Um, I'm going to be doing some more and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.